disorder. My name is Matt and thanks for joining. Today we are going to be looking at Operation Kaltstrom from Corvus Belli. This is... Oh, there goes the wind. This is one of the pre-order packs. Or the new uh, kind of introductory pack to playing Cold One. Um, it is available through Corpus Belly Store as well as through our own, so over on impetuousorder.com. Please feel free to go and check it out. You can pick this up, the Diaphos Pack, and Kai Lang. Uh, uh, Kai Lang. Lai Ka. Yang Kai. I'm sure why I keep calling him Kai Lang. So let's crack this open. Ooh. That's obviously I'm in the office, surrounded by four cats at the moment. Yamazaki, Kanoka, Soda, and Yugi somewhere else. So inside, that's the contents of the box. So much like uh, Operation Wildfire, um, there is none of the little white box that usually comes inside. So you have a little Araste of the game. We have a whole bunch of line of fire bases, which are the kind of standard 25 mil FM. Inside, you get the dice, you get three for Panoceania, and three for. Ooh, the wind's strong today. Uh, four. Sorry, okay. But yeah, you get your dice, and as usual, the one is the uh, the one is the faction symbol as is standard with these dice you get three of each which is nice now inside let's see what we have a whole bunch of miniatures yeah. so let's crack open this one i don't know who this is i haven't opened this box before so let's actually lift this one and slide up the book so we can look at what miniatures are what. So, unlike the previous boxes, this either comes in English or Spanish. The little book is not dual um, language. It gives you a whole bunch, a lot more background than previous boxes as to what is happening and the background of each of the units and what's going on. So, we're going to put this just to one side. So it tells you all the different units, and then it tells you different paint schemes for each faction. So we're just going to pop that to the side, bring this forward, and we're just going to see if we can identify who you are. I think it's obvious who you are. You are the Knight of Justice, I believe. So this is like a new female version of the Father Knight. So this is the cape and the top half. This is her... front part, and it looks like I'm actually missing a part. Unless this is two different people. Which you could be, but I'm not sure. No. It is not. Yeah. So that's the cloak and one of her arms. This is her kind of torso and one leg. And then in here we have her head. It's very tight. Very night savory. With the usual antennas in the little part of her hood. We will pop her back into her bag as it looks like we might be missing her legs. Let's now move on to this. Who are you? You are the Lazarus Knight. 
the infamous of the Order of St. Lazarus. So he has his pistol on. Pistol and sword chief. Okay. Obviously he's on his back. Then we have his main body. And then we have a somewhat large sword. A little bit of cleaning up to be done on these. And then his legs. Pin back in his back. Okay, so we've seen part of the Knight of Justice and the Infirmus of the Order of St. Lazarus. So this next bag here contains the remaining parts for the Knight of Justice. So inside we have her, as it is a female knight, a sword. Lovely kind of crusader style sword. Her other leg. So this, while I thought it was missing, is actually simply in a bag. Some great details there on the legs. With the kind of like the servo muscles. And then we have this little sculpted bit of snow for her base, for her to stand on, because she's got quite a wide leg stands. Let's pop that in the back into the bag and let's look at the next miniature. Oh, next we have who are you? That's a Zan sheet. So this is one of the Zan sheets. Now if you've watched one of our other videos the from uh, box to tabletop video, you saw me build some Zanshi, and this is the same Zanshi but in a different style, now in winter mode, and a much better connector. If you saw that video you noticed how difficult it was to glue guns on, but now the connector is much much better, easier to do. So that's a great little Zanshi. Up next we have another Zanshi. You get a Zanshi, you get a Zanshi, everybody gets a Zanshi. Oh, this one is in more parts. So we have her the body, legs and body, legs and torso. Let's uh, hope that focuses in. Come on, okay. This is the top, the head and head shoulders. Right, we can get this to focus on. Oh dear. There we go. There we go. Nice details around the face. And beautiful kind of winter fur lined coat. And then we have her combi rifle. And again, these miniatures aren't on the big wide tabs that you often find with Infinity miniatures. These are on kind of little tabs to make it easier to build if, you, if you've watched any of my build videos. You'll see that I usually trim them right, right down. And lastly we have a, another section, I believe. Let me just flip to that page of the book. Yeah, you know, this is the other Zanji. Oops, that's a funny color. This is her um, struggling to focus again. Mm, yeah. okay. There we go. So that's a combi rifle and her other arms. Nice little 
detail of the fur trimming there on the miniature. Then we have the remaining body. And then you have great sculpting details. They look pretty shiny, so I wonder if they're already cleaned. Um, I'll find out when I come to try and glue them together. If they're super easy to glue, they've already been cleaned up the mold release, which again, as Code 1 is meant to be an easy jumping position to get into it, that makes it an awful lot easier. Up next we have, probably not from there, it's probably not here either, I think this might be the knocker now, oh, here's his body. Chunky contact points for this heavy infantry guy. Uh, boarding shotgun. Always useful when you come up to close quarters teams. Now, the knock-on in this have um, minutism minus six. Who are you? I believe you might be a bad effect. Let's just flick and check that book. Yeah, you're a Darfay. So here we go. This is the upper torso and his clunk. details that are going to pick up really nicely on his cloak. Here's his Spitfire. Good kind of medium range gun, which is nicer than what they usually do. They usually stick um, a HMG guy in, which doesn't really work uh, when you're playing on such a small table such as the um, His legs, nice chunky legs, and again chunky connectors, and then his sword arm. Again, quite a bit to clean off on these, but they're very shiny for some reason. Maybe that's why it's not focusing in on them very well. <coughs> you ought to focus on my little aquas. R5G struggling there. This guy is the Ujak, I think. Yeah, look at this guy. He's huge. Way more intimidating than you think he would be. This is his, I believe, combi rifle, heavy flame. Maybe just a light flame. Heavy flame seems a bit OTT. One of his arms. And then what I assume are two flame canisters that are going to go somewhere. Back in his little baggie. I'm about halfway through doing the miniatures, I guess. Here we have a fusel lid. And this one is playing his pistol because people who point pistols are cool. Especially when they're also meant to be holding their rifle. There's a panos here and then. Combi rifle. Pop 
you if I pull it back before I start losing pieces all over the place. What do we have here? Ah, uh, this is the Tundum. Tundum. That's what it's called, right? This new sniper guy. The Hundum. The Hundum. She's standing on a little tactical rock there. The main body. <coughs> Here is a multi sniper rifle. Let's make sure we get everything back in her little baggie. Uh, up next, we have another fuse there. By the looks of it. This is a no fusel. This is a female fusel. Can get focus. Do, 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 do. Next we have mm, what I assume is the fork. It's got to be the orc because it's coming in very many parts. And here's his leg and torso. With half a head. Here's the uh, cloak and his other leg. He's another guy who believes it's so cool that he's holding a pistol. I'm trying to shoot with a pistol. While wow. also holding his rifle. But speaking of rifles, he has a multi-rifle. Which is going to be great because in Kalstrom, I believe he comes with an AP rifle. AP rounds. And then here you have the two little antennae doodads on the back of his head. Possibly my favourite miniature in this box. I'm not sure why the guy dies in power armour, which I would hope would be hate he didn't need to have coats on. But it looks cool. Back in the back with you. <clears throat> you can go in there. Up next we have another fuse left. This guy. Oh, pretty cool and standard stuff, really. He's got another combi rifle. Again, pretty nice. There's a lot of flash and stuff on these to cut off. We may do a live stream and build these guys just to have. Fun. The penultimate manager is the Greelang. Greelang's skirmisher, Ghost Girl 4, something. I don't know. I can't speak Chinese. I can barely speak English. His legs, his torso and coat. And here is his shotgun, boring shotgun. Which is nice. If you have Beyond Red Veil, which came with a Guilang multi sniper and a Dao Fei with a HMG, you're going to have quite a nice um, addition to add in to.
to your Operation Curl String Clause because they'll both be legal. If you check out the um, Infinity Code 1 army building app, the last guy we have is the, let me see his name on the box, the Kunai S Mercenary Ninja pre order exclusive ninja. And lastly, his multi sniper rifle. Oh dear, go and do full class. There we go. Ooh, too far. Yeah, too far. Yeah. Okay. But that's pretty much that. So that's all the miniatures that are in the pack. So let's get those back in there and the dice because as you know we all need dice. I have rather a lot of dice now for infinity. Let's move this to one side. Now we have Kaltstrom Colonial Settlement Pack. Now this is a reskin of the pack for uh, the pack that came in Wildfire. So we've already done an unboxing of that, but we will quickly rip this open. I say rip, we will delicately open this. Because the tokens changed a little bit between that and this. Puffy comes off and goes in the trash. So inside we have the instructions and these are obviously double sided. And inside you get a really nice map. I'm hoping CD are doing a oh this is interesting. There is no poster on the back. This is only single sided this time. Now what's good is that the central bit, I might get a photo of this and put this on there. The central bit actually looks like it's a raised up base and facility, and around it isn't that textured, it's like ground texture, so you can add this to current maps if you wanted to. There's a little copyright thing here. Copyright infinity trademark, of course. Okay, so you can't steal it and print it. That comes to the side. Buildings are the same. Then we have all the silhouette templates that you will need. You can see here that the camo tokens are now a little bit different and unloaded and loaded. Now, disconnected, uh, disconnected, and targeted. These are all the tokens that you will need to play code one. So we'll just pop those out. It comes with the usual silhouette templates, the flame, the teardrop templates, and the two measuring rulers, which are just here, in both inches and centimeters on the opposite sides. Again, some more cool boards. Aristair is clearly very popular on Svarbaheim. Then you also get these, some supply boxes and some console objectives, A's and B's. Now, this is great. You get antennas and objectives and supply boxes. This is great because <clears throat> otherwise you don't, you have to go to a third party kind of place to get objective markers. Um, we have some, uh, some objective markers produced by MicroArt Studio. Um, they are plastic, a clear, clear acrylic with kind of patterns underneath. And also, I have some of the scenery pieces that you can get produced again by Micro Arts. We use those in a tournament. Now, let's put this up on the small camera. 
hit. So we have the usual. Focus. Please. So we have regular orders, a lot of regular orders. You have, if you get this after, well, you get a Kylan kind of token and you get some camo minus threes. Uh, two lieutenant orders, some immobilized, and some wound tokens, ones that are on the other side. Two wounds. Two wounds. Lieutenant. And on the other side of your order tokens, so I'll just pop this one out. And you can see that on the other side, it's your regular order. Uh, you, you have your camo minus three, minus six here. Whereas on here you have this camo, the other side you have camo minus three and mines. So everything's double sided. It's really easy. Interesting that they didn't put an order here this time, which they did in Wildfire. And then more buildings, more buildings. So yeah, a whole bunch of buildings to build. So if you have wildfire, and then you have this, you have more than enough uh, terrain to really play a medium scale, and even a full scale game of Code 1. We, so yeah, it's a great little addition, and a great way to start. I like how simplified it is, and I like that the miniatures are much more chunky and easy to put together than previously. They tended to be very the contact points tend to be very skinny and very challenging for new players to put together. So yeah, um, one last kind of little announcement is we have translated the quick start rules from Infinity from for Code One into Japanese. These are available on our website, and they will also soon be available on Corpus Belli's website. So the uh, infinitytheuniverse.com website will soon be having those once they finish revamping their website. Uh, we are also working on translating the full Code 1 rules, but that will take time. I am going to get on and build this stuff, either on a stream or something else, so you guys can watch it, get these built, and hopefully I can convince my wife, while we're in social isolation, to play through this box set and we can give maybe a little bit of Japanese commentary as we do it. So thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, I hope you enjoyed this and you didn't just use this to send yourself to sleep at the middle of the night. Uh, drop a comment below if there's anything you would like to see in the future, or if you just want to say hi. Thanks for watching and see ya!